We're so pleased to be able to introduce John Gallman with the True Blue Power Division, otherwise associated with Mid-Continent Instruments and Avionics. So, sir, welcome to Aero TV. Thank you. It's good to be here. Boy, you bring up the word lithium and everybody goes running for the hills, and they shouldn't be. Not at all. Can you tell us uh, right now with your implementations and what you're doing with that technology in True Blue? Because you guys are doing some amazing stuff, and more important, it works. Well, we've been doing it for three or four years now, and we're quite happy with the result. Um, we started off with the selection of a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which we thought was appropriate for aviation because of its, shall we say, non-energetic nature mm -hmm. in, a, in a failure mode. Um, and then we focused on lots of design features that both add performance, life, and safety to the product. Let's face it, power requirements in aviation require, one, dependability, two, lightweight, and three, no matter what, and more, 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 and oh, by the way, more please. Um, this technology has it in spades. Uh, what do you do right now with developing the technologies and more important, uh, certification and of course, uh, working with the community to find implementations and make sure that everybody's operating according to plan? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, we try. We, we do. <laughs> We do lots of things. I mean, I have our um, I have our emergency power supply here on the on the table, and we offer a 60% weight savings comparative to the lead acid technology, and roughly twice the life. Mm -hmm. um, we advertise that this product will last for 10 years. But in terms of what we do to deliver, if you will, with a lithium technology, um, the first of all is the uh, electronic features that provide both value and performance and safety. This little package has a battery charger. This little package has detection for all of the safety features that you might want to that shuts it off and disconnects it. Um, if there's something wrong inside, if there's something wrong outside. Mm -hmm. And so it will shut itself off in, in any conceivable scenario. And then we follow through with all the appropriate aerospace testing. Mm -hmm. When this article was first tested, some tests were being anticipated but not required. During the initial TSO for this product, we stepped up and asked for a deviation to take on the additional tests to ensure mm -hmm. that we would have a safe product for our customers and have followed along with the um, upgrades. My chief engineer participates on the industry committee for regulations and so we stay up, up to speed with that and as the products evolved, we've, we've retested and gone from certification to C-179 to certification to TSO C-179A to ETSO certification to C-179A and followed through with several installation certifications on multiple platforms. Where is this technology being utilized right now? Give us some examples if you could. The most popular platform is the King Air family. So we have lots of those in in, um, Which is a hell King of a Airs. test area because those um, airplanes get beat to death and, and um, kicked around. And um, you know we're just now moving into helicopters. So you want to talk about a harsh environment? We've just Indeed. completed a Part 27 certification for installation in, in helicopters. Talk about the testing sequence on this. I mean, that's all the rage right now with other technologies of, of, of uh, limited relation. But what does it take to? demonstrate to the FAA, and of course demonstrate to the community that this is the answer to what everybody's been looking for, the lighter, the more powerful, the more durable. There's two primary, primary categories of qualification testing. I mean, the first, the first set is the environmental testing for DO-160, which mm -hmm. you get with any avionics component that you'll find in the, uh, for sale here today. And um, that, that ensures that the electronics doesn't interfere with the rest of the airplane. Mm -hmm. um, the, the testing for lithium products is under the RTCA DO311, and that series of tests demonstrates that it performs, if you will, to expectations. It also gives you the tests for safety. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you're expected to provide an external short circuit and prove that nothing happens. Mm -hmm. um, you're expected to purposely damage the cells inside the, inside the pack and, once again, document and prove what happens so that you provide the appropriate protections and or information to the installation customer. The product line at this point, where do you see it positioning itself for the foreseeable future of the industry? Where are you looking to take this next? You know, I believe the lithium iron phosphate cells are appropriate for any battery on an airplane. Mm -hmm. um, in some installations, we will um, um, have different approaches to keeping it safe for the customer. Um, in others, there'll be a little bit more education. 
Um, one of the things I frequently bring up is, is that we're surrounded by lithium in our commercial lives. They're mm -hmm. in our laptops, they're in our cell phones, they're in handheld devices all over the airplane. I see no reason why it can't be used throughout the airplane. Are you seeing any reluctance right now in light of recent events? Because let's face it, uh, you know, lithium's had its good times and bad times in the news, and even though it's an unrelated and totally different uh, uh, type of technology, are you finding people being a little bit more cautious on this? And how do you educate them as to what truly works here? I'm getting lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it depends on the customer. Yeah. Um, Aviation people are generally pretty it, it, smart, so it should Interestingly take enough, I'm not getting very many questions from our traditional customer base today. Okay. The folks that are installing it in King Air's day in, day out um, haven't had a problem. We've had 300 units in the field for mm -hmm. quite some time, and they love That's it, considerable. And, and they're using it, and I'm not getting any questions. Um, I do get questions from the large OEM customers that we like to have production contracts with, mm -hmm. and, um, and they're looking through all the data very, very carefully. And in fact, we just went through a, an amendment to our STC for this product. Uh, we, we did an initial Part 23 all model list STC in 2010, and we just amended it this year with the Dash 5 unit. And we got lots of questions through the, the folks that we hired to help us with the certification and also the FAA. So um, we are getting lots of questions. I think we're providing good answers and that we meet the standard special conditions for certification and that we have a safe and reliable product. Well, what's interesting here is that I think the first thing people need to take notice of the fact is, you know, who's providing this technology. It's not like you folks haven't been around the patch for quite a while and have, have it's certainly established a, an exceptional, if not extraordinary, reputation within the industry because we hear all the good stuff and we hear all the bad stuff and we don't hear any bad stuff about you guys. So that's got to be, you know, a point right from the standpoint that, excuse me, right from the beginning, that people understand that you're making an investment, you're making an investment for a reason and you're not being foolish about it. At the same time, though, I would assume that it's got to be a, a little bit more difficult to just put together uh, a polite educational process that says, folks, this is the real deal. It, it is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as you know, we, um, we provided a, a public technical training session at AEA last year mm -hmm. um, where we talked about differences in chemistries and the, and the overall industry approach to dealing with safety. Everything from all the certification hurdles to the additional testing that you do for hazardous shipping to some guidance to the customers on how they might use it or, or might choose to use it differently than a lead acid or a NICAD technology. So it's, it, it's not an easy road, but with a 60% weight savings and this kind of value, I, I think it's worth pursuing. How do you take a new technology and introduce it into such a conservative community? You know, I find that they all want it because of the value. I have no shortage of interest. So the, the light bulb just goes on bing right away, huh? With, with, a, with a 40 to 60% savings in weight, yeah. these are airplanes. Weight is value. Mm -hmm. Weight is life. <laughs> what, weight, weight is value. Um, with the amount of um, cycles that you get out of these cells, mm -hmm. we're offering two or three times the life of, of existing battery technology. So there's a life cycle cost benefit. There's mm -hmm. a total loss co cost of ownership benefit. So I have no shortage of customers that want to talk to me. And they're not, uh, it's not as though I have to go to them and sell a safety story. They're coming to me to get convinced that they can deal with it comfortably. Excellent. And, and with that approach to the industry, I think we'll work through it like we did with any other challenging technology that has found its way onto airplanes. I mean, if you dial the clock back, there's there were thermal runaway problems with nickel cadmium batteries when they first came online. So um, it's not as though the industry hasn't been through this before and that we won't meet the challenge. This is the one thing that it, it bothers me, especially when you take a look at folks who have, quote unquote, covered the industry and they seem to forget what's come, come to pass. And, you know, beforehand, uh, got good friends throughout the community who can tell you, well, back when we introduced this or when we introduced, boy, what a cob that was and how difficult it was and so forth. And the interesting thing is from what I've heard from the community and uh, especially some of the folks I've talked to uh, in the turbine biz, this has been a pretty uh, simple uh, entryway for you. I mean, it's, it's come out, it's done its job, and nobody's throwing them at you, nobody's breaking your windows, everybody's basically saying, and oh, uh, we'll have another order for you later. It's, it's been a good road. So where does it go from here? Where, uh, what's the future of True Blue Power? What's the future of these technologies? Are you also looking at others? 
You know, the battery world is moving very quickly. It's anyone's guess what the next lithium chemistry is going to be or whether we'll all be looking at a different battery chemistry. So that's a challenge for us to keep up with it. Um, we are currently A123's channel partner for aerospace. In that role, we can provide other pack developers with their cells. We can develop them modules that they can build into their own packs. And of course, our favorite is to provide the aviation community with a completely certified solution. Um, so I, we're, we're ready to engage with all customers for all batteries on airplanes with that technology today. Mm -hmm. um, I think that for True Blue Power to be successful in batteries, we'll have to respond quickly to changes in the technology and new cell manufacturers that might come up with something better than what we're working with today. How is the response from transport category? You know, we strategically have decided to capture our traditional GA market. Okay. So we're not specifically going out after transport business right now. I just can't believe, though, that they're not knocking um, on your door. <laughs> um, I think we'd be happy to serve if, if it was the appropriate mix. There you go. All righty. Well, I got to tell you, it's, uh, we've had a, we had a lot of fun when you launched the product. It was interesting to watch how you uh, positioned it within the industry. And, of course, when you have a company that's had such a legacy of service and support to the industry, whenever they do something new, it tends to make everybody's antenna go up and go, okay, what do they got here? And do we need to be here? Do we need to be doing this? And then they take a look at the technology and go, boy, we're just not smart enough for that. And it's obvious that you folks have been, and I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes from here. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, John, um, like anything, uh, if you would keep us up to date on the technology down the line, there's going to be questions as, th as time goes on, and I realize that the questions that are raised are, have nothing to do with specifically uh, what, you're, what you are at this point positioning yourself with, in the industry with, but like anything, I appreciate the chance to educate people out there and the information that we can get from somebody who understands exactly what's going on here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure visiting with you. Thank you so much. Aero TV's live coverage of the 56th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.